Welcome to Accounting 101, Lesson 4B. This is a worked example of how to deal with credit sales, credit purchases, and returns inwards and returns outwards. So a quick reminder then about sales, purchases, sales returns or returns inwards and returns outwards. So remember on our sales account, we should only ever see credit entries. So what we don't want is anything really on the debit side at this stage because we haven't started balancing off. Oh, when, we do, when we do start balancing off, that will change. With purchases, it's an expense. So sales is income. So sales is income, purchases is an expense. So purchases we should only ever see on the debit side. We don't want anything on the credit side. When it comes to sales returns, sales returns is the opposite of sales. So we should only see transactions on the debit side and purchase returns or returns outwards is the opposite of purchases. We should only ever see transactions on the credit side. So we don't want anything on the debit side of purchase returns and we don't want anything on the credit side of sales returns. Now, when we come to do the final accounts, the sales returns figure will be deducted from sales to get a net sales figure. Same with purchases, but we do need to log the two separately because this is something we need to keep an eye on. Any sort of returns, returns inwards or returns outwards, has a cost to our business. So if customers are returning goods to us, we've got to pay for the, the cost of restocking and potentially the, the carriage. So we need to be very careful. We also need to think about quality. So if we're returning lots of goods to our suppliers, then why is that? Is it because the customers aren't happy with the goods, the quality is not good, we're not ordering the right stuff, a whole raft of, of reasons. Anyway, back to the nitty gritty. So I've got this um, question 3.6, which has come from the Osborne AQA textbook. Uh, so this is somebody called Helen Smith. We're doing June 2013. She trades as fashion frocks. And there's a series of transactions. We're just going to work our way through them, posting them into the T accounts. So the first thing we can see then, we've bought goods. Remember, we never want a T account called goods. It's purchases. So purchases, £350 from Design Limited, Designs Limited, plural. So we're going to debit the purchases account. We're going to put the date in there, 2nd of June. And we're going to put who we bought it from. Remember, we always have to log the other side of the entry, £350. Now, if we'd have paid for this at the time, we'd be crediting our bank or our cash account. And remember, we've got, I've got a bank account I drew up earlier, money received on the debit side, money paid out on the credit side. But actually, we didn't pay for the goods. So we need to set up a T account with Designs Limited and we need to log the £350 that we now owe to that company for the purchases that we made on the 2nd of June. So we've got debit to the purchases account, always debit purchases whenever we buy goods. And this time we're crediting Designs Limited. Okay, so second transaction, sold goods. Remember, we don't want an account called goods. We need to put it into the sales account. So 4th of June, we've sold goods. And this time it's what we call cash sales. Even though a check's been received, the other half of the entry is going to go into the bank. So this is not a credit transaction. We can pay the money into the bank. So we've credited sales. We now need to debit the bank account. £220. Okay, another one here, we've got 5th of June, we've sold goods, this time cash has been received, I'll just tick these off so I know where I am, 5th of June, this time it's cash, remember cash and bank have to be kept completely separate, so I'm going to open a new account, a cash account down here, and I'm going to pay that money in, so it was £115 on the 5th of June. So it works the same as the bank account, money received on the debit side, money paid out on the credit side. Why have we received it? Well, it was for sales, 115 pounds. So I can uh, tick that off. Next one then, on the 6th of June, we returned goods to Designs Limited. So we have returned goods, 100 pounds to Design Limited. Now, if we look at the Design Limited account, when we purchased goods, it was on the credit side. We now are going to need to debit. Um, and the other half of the entry is going to go to returns outwards or purchase returns. £100. I probably should have used some consistency here. So purchase returns or returns outwards on the 6th of June. And it was for designs 
limited 100 pounds. Okay, so we've logged the purchase returns, which is the opposite um, of purchases. Right, next one then, bought goods on credit from Mercia Knitwear. We've bought goods, so that's purchases. Still need to debit the purchases account, but we're going to credit the company that we've bought the goods from, Mercia Knitwear, £400. And then we're going to credit an account, Mercia Knitwear, Credit that account with £400 on the 7th of June and look where the other half of the entry is for purchases and it was for £400. Okay, get too much paper here. Um, sold goods, £350 on credit. Sorry, sold goods, £350 on credit to Wyvern Trade Supply. So 10th of June, we're going to record the sale in there. Wyvern, I'll just put Wyvern TS because I can't fit it all in there. It's too small. It was £350. So we need to set up another account, which we're going to call Wyvern Trade Supplies. And we're going to credit that account with the, um, sorry, debit the account, 10th of June, Wyvern Trade Supplies. I sold £350. So they're a trade receivable. They owe us £350 that's on the debit side. Okay, so that's that one dealt with. Sold goods on the 12th of June, check being received. So we need to find our bank account here. So let's pay it into the bank because it was a check. So it was on the 12th of June and it was to do with sales, cash sales, even though it's a check. And then we're going to credit the sales account 12th of June. The other half of the entry is in the bank. £175 there, so we can tick that one off. Wyvern Trade Supplies have now returned some goods to us, so let's find the Wyvern Trade Supplies account. Here it is. When we sold the goods to them, it was on the debit side, so when they send stuff back to us on the 15th of June, we're going to put it to returns inwards, or sales returns, £50. we find the sales returns or the returns inwards here. 15th of June, Wyvern Trade Supplies, £50. Okay, so that's now recorded. We can tick that one off. We've returned goods, £80 to Mercia Knitwear. So let's find the account for Mercia Knitwear. We bought goods. It was on the credit side because it's a liability. We owe them the money. So when we return the goods on the 17th of June, I'm going to returns outwards, purchase returns, whichever you prefer, £80 in there and then turns outwards purchase return 17th of June we're going to credit that one Mercia knitwear 80 pounds okay next one then we've paid the amount owing to designs limited by bank transfer so let's look at the designs limited account we bought 350 from them we returned a hundred pounds so we actually owe 250 pounds we've paid it by bank transfer on the 18th of june so we're going to take 18th of june designs limited we're going to take 250 pounds out of the bank account so the, the amount owed by bank transfer we have to calculate which we've just done so that's that one dealt with sold goods 180 pounds cash being received well let's pay that money into the cash account so the 20th of june sales £180 and then we're going to credit the sales account so that was on the 20th of June cash 180 so you can see all the different sorts of sales are all still stacking up in the same T account we've got um, cash sales that have either been received through the bank or the cash and then we've got credit sales that have been made to trade receivables but they all just go straight into the sales account all on the credit side same with purchases if we had cash purchases paid for by bank or cash that will be on the debit side of the purchases account along with the credit transactions we don't need a, a separate one right 23rd of june we've bought some more goods on credit from designs limited so if we bought goods it's purchases 23rd of june um, we bought them from designs limited so let's write the uh, supplier in there and we bought 285 pounds worth so we're now going to credit the Designs Limited account, 23rd of June, 
the purchases that we now owe them, £285. Okay, next one then, we've paid some rent in cash, so 26th of June, we've paid rent, so let's take it out of the cash account, remember it works the same way as the bank, money in on the left, money out on the right, um, £125 coming out of the cash, and then we need to set up a rent expense account for the rent paid, let's write rent paid because it could also be a source of income, it could be received, not in this case, we've paid it by cash, one hundred. £125, not very neat to there, £125 and then last of all we received a bank transfer from Wyvern Trade Supplies so let's see how much they owe us, we sold them 350 worth of goods, they returned 50 so they now owe us £300, they're going to be paying that by bank transfer on the 28th of June so we'll credit Wyvern Trade Supplies and then pay that money into the bank account so 28th of June Wyvern Trade Supplies and that was, how much did we say? £300. Okay, so that's how you deal with credit sales and purchases, cash sales and purchases, and returns inwards, um, or sales returns and returns outwards. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.